my great challenger welcome back to my channel it's a happy day for me today I get to play with my corning wear yes I am um boring you may say uh, well not really because I'm gonna do some cleaning too the kitchen is clean uh, but I just want to tell you what I'm doing today um, so if you remember for those of you who follow me for a while I'm a corning wear nut there's actually a Facebook group called Corning Wear Nuts and apparently I'm not the only one who collects Corning, Corning Wear. There's a lot of people out there, it's a big community and some people collect all the patterns. Obviously they have big storage or they collect just one pattern. I collect one pattern, mine is Spice of Life. Uh, it's from the 70s, uh, so it's my age. And the reason why I collect that one is not just because I like the colors and it's very kitchen um, cooking oriented. I'll show it to you in a second. You probably never seen it before, but it's also written in French, so it's got a lot of different things that are attractive to me. I love cooking with Corningware. Corningware is awesome. I hear there's a big comeback for Corningware. People are going to the stores, the uh, thrift stores and flea market, whatever, to get the old Corningware, or asking their moms and grandmas for the old Corningware. Because it just doesn't get dirty, it's easy to clean, you can put it in the oven, you can put it on the stove, on gas and electric. And you can put it in the freezer, in the fridge, on the table, it's super versatile and it's just awesome. Okay, enough cording wear advertisement. But I have quite a few pieces, as you can see. Uh, but these are um, just the cooking pieces that I have. But I also have the functional kind of accessories and unfortunately for me I don't have any place to put them. So they are, so they are all the way up there. And in there I have uh, a percolator that I found. Uh, and then the rest were gifts from you guys. <laughs> and I also have canisters. Um, hold on. I use three of them here for my tea. They made everything but the kitchen sink in that pattern, by the way. So I use three of them for tea. Uh, I have a little grain there and then I put my, um, what do you call it, Splenda in it. So I'm using those, but I have three more canisters on the other side that are empty. And that's about it. Oh, wait. That's not true. I also have a uh, heating plate and on top of the fridge over there, I have the placemats. <laughs> I'm telling you, they made everything but the kitchen sink in that pattern. They had fabric, they had clocks, they had uh, uh, piggy bank, they had uh, the tea, uh, which I'm still looking for, the tea kettle, they had the uh, teapot, they had uh, forks and knives and cooking utensils and... Um, the crock pot, <laughs> everything but the kitchen sink. So I decided that since I use it and since I enjoy it and since I'm in the kitchen pretty much every day, three times a day, either cooking or cleaning or editing videos, that I might as well just be able to gaze and enjoy my corningware. And so what I did is that I went on one of my many corningware um, Facebook page and I ask, hey, where do you guys store and display your corning wear? So the majority of people actually display their corning wear collection. Um, the overflow goes into a different room, but the majority of collectors actually do display. They don't just put them in cabinet and close the door. They want to enjoy and look at the collection, which makes sense. Why have a collection of something and then put it behind a door, a cabinet door, unless it's a glass door and you're not able to see it unless you open the door. So there was a little bit of everything. Of course, some people have huge kitchen and like me, so they have an entire wall, imagine that, <laughs> or a whole butler's pantry full of corningware in one pattern or whatever. Uh, or they would have a set of shelf, or they had a bookcase, so they have like specific cabinets for that. I don't have that. All my cabinets are pretty much used except for this one over there. What I do have of weather is a space above the sink. And here it is. Let me uh, move the shape down so we can see me a little bit better. Is it better? It's the same. Okay. So here it is. Back in the days, I had Scott installed the shelf right here um, for my bonsai. And it killed them. <laughs> 
because I do get sunshine in the morning coming this way and then it goes so the, the sun would kind of like rotate on this window for about four hours and it fried them. I killed my bonsai with the shelf. It was a bad idea. Uh, do I want to get bonsai again? I don't know. I really don't have the time. Um, I would love to have them but I just don't know where to put them. Um, you know, so I can enjoy them, see them and care for them at the same time. So my two bonsai are dead. Um, oh well. But I was thinking since I'm not the only one who loves Corningware and there's so many people who put them as display. I was asking for people, hey, where do you put them in your kitchen? And there was a lot of people who actually put them above the sink on the kitchen window. There's a lot of people who have glass shelves where they put plants. And these people have shelves like that or they just have a cabinet with no window and they put their corningware there. So guess what? I am going to add two shelves and I'm going to show you where they're going to go. Um, what is this silly? I'm reopening it. So I have one here. I'm going to put one right about here and then the next one is going to go right about where the cross section of the window is. Okay. So I have the brackets. I have the wood. I just have to stain the wood once it's installed. Um, the little, you don't see it. Hold on. Obviously this primitive decoration here is going to have to go. I don't think you can see it, it's backlit. But my biggest issue right now is that since we installed this shelf, I haven't been able to get the window uh, to tilt this way, to wash it. So the window is really filthy on the outside. Uh, and moderately filthy on the inside because you know cleaning at my forte all right so what i'm going to do before i install anything i figured well it's a nice day might as well get the ladder and i'm going to do all my windows at least the outside of it the screens and the windows so that way this is nice and clean and um i just have to install the shelves and then i'll clean all my corning wear and we'll play with it for a minute um, and you're looking forward to that <laughs> but anyway one of the reasons why I wanted to have stuff on this window here is because uh, um, Ralph and Beth installed a uh, extension they built an extension to the house right there and right here <laughs> right in front of me as I'm on, at my kitchen sink is their uh, first floor bathroom so yeah <laughs> I don't really need to see them, you know, going to the bathroom. <laughs> it's not that close. It's, I don't know, maybe 30 feet. I don't know what the easement is. Uh, but, you know, it's whatever. I just don't want to see them go to the bathroom. And I do want curtains. But anyway, because uh, they get filthy in the kitchen, the curtains, you know. Um, let me start by getting the screen off. So that I can wash the windows and I'm actually going to wash probably all the windows on the outside just for the kitchen. Might as well since I'm going to be out there. Okay so first things first I need to get the screen off and I got Scott on the other side. He's going to catch the screen for me because the car is right there. Because I can't wash the window without the, with the screen on. There you go. Thank you. Uh -huh. It's nice outside. All right, let me get my Setsi water. And uh, wow, the window is really dirty. Yikes. So I'm just going to get my uh, soapy water and the ladder and start cleaning. Honestly, say that it's a really good feeling when all your windows are super clean. 
super super clean and Scott is uh, whatever <laughs> I can't with him uh, he's about ready to do the second coat well another coat on this side um, he just washed it so it has to dry yeah yeah we see you we see you <laughs> He's doing more around, you so, you know this, right? Um, and this is the stuff I did yesterday, you remember that. Okay, so clean windows inside, outside. I did um, the screen and what I need to do now is that I just went downstairs uh, and I realized I don't have any more stain. Uh, why? Because I used it all for the uh, swing. <laughs> I have to replace this, this is broken. Um, so I have to go to Ace and get a new window lock and I have to get uh, the gun smoke color which is this color so I can stain the shelves. So I'm gonna do that and then uh, it's um, uh, two o'clock so I'll have a late lunch and then after lunch I'll start cutting and installing uh, the shelf. Now when Scott did it, because he installed this one for my birthday years ago, I would say maybe five years ago, um, he said it was very challenging. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I will see. I'm going to get some anchors too. I have to get um, the screws that go on those brackets and see what kind of anchors I need because I don't think I have any downstairs. I'm constantly pulling shelves out, putting new shelves in here and there. So it's the kind of stuff that I always need to have on hand. So I'm going to Ace, I'll be right back, have lunch, and when I come back I'll be measuring, cutting, staining, installing, and then I can play with my corning wear. And I'll tell you what, it's always something when you own a house. Um, you're trying to do a project, and next thing you know, as you're doing your project, something up comes up. Something else comes up. All right, it's this thing here. I don't know if you can see um, that's broken. So as a result, the latch can get onto it. So we're gonna replace the whole thing, and I'll be able to latch my key. What is this difference in color here? Is this the grime on my window? Oh boy, did I put myself in a position where? I should be embarrassed. I might as well wash it, huh? Well, in my defense, this window is higher than me. <laughs> so I really can't see what's going on up there. Nah, it looks like it was tinted. Oh, you know what it is? They put the uh, thing on and then they tinted it. Well, that's dumb. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. It's not necessarily grime, but... I'm still proving grime though. <laughs> oh, it never ends. It's always something. Okay. Yes, it's working and it's sealed. Excellent. All right, problem solved. Moving on, I gotta have lunch. So I need to get to business here and uh, we're gonna start by measuring stuff. This is going on the inside of the cabinet. See, I have a little lip right here. I don't think you can see it. Um, the shelves are gonna be the nine and a quarter. I think the one I bought is um, eight and three quarter. Um, I bought the ones that were So I didn't have to whip it. Uh, here we go. We are at we're at 43 and a quarter. And then over here, it should be the same. 43 and a quarter. So I got to cut I have one big length that's 10 foot. I need to cut, uh, I need to make two cuts. So I have two shelves that are 43 and a quarter. Perfect. 
Okay, so right now I have. Um, let me see if I can turn this light on. These are Scott's shelves are kind of. Old. No, that's dirty. Um, I don't know why. Um, this is tension fit. You can't see because I'm backlit. Let me do this. Maybe. I don't know. I'm coming at all sorts of colors. But I'm leveled. But I think it's too high because uh, when I'm here, I can see. Well, I don't know. I can see the uh, bar from the window. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Not by much. But remember, the tension fit and I have to level it. I do have brackets, they're not going to stay like that. Perfect. Alright, let me see. Alright, that's better. Because I don't want to see the bottom part of the window here. I know it's silly. Am I level? Yes. Okay. So, now, I gotta make sure they're in there. All right. I could put stuff on now, light stuff, and it wouldn't go anywhere because I'm tension fit. But I'm not gonna do that with corning wear. So let me get the brackets. So here's one bracket, and it's gonna go over here. I'll put it a little bit in the middle right here. Yeah. I hope I'm not in the way. Okay. Make sure I'm leveled. Yes. So the second bracket is going to go over here. Alright. Now. The thing is, I can't drill with the shelf on, so obviously I'm going to have to remove it. At least move it up this way a little bit so that I can go ahead and drill. Right, and ladies who are watching and don't think you can do stuff like that, trust me, you can. Okay, I'm just here to encourage you to understand that if you want something done, stop asking for somebody else to do it, do it yourself. You can do it. All right, so I will find my little hole here, and it's right here. There we go. And the next one. Put my anchors in. It is, um... It's not difficult, it's just that it's not an easy... I gotta get the uh, step stool. It's a hard to reach area. I don't know if you understand what I mean by that. Like, you see what I mean? It's really not all that. Okay, here we go. I'm in. I say for instance that this area was even smaller and I would have a hard time plugging in my stuff, right? <sighs> use something else, like you can use an extension, a piece of wood, anything, and then you tap with your hammer on that piece of wood to get your, your anchor in. Alright, you got sometimes you gotta come up with a Creative solutions. All right, these are Phillips. Let me get my bracket back. Start with the first one. This is the part that Scott thought was difficult, but I think it's because he's got bigger hands than me. Yes, what he means. Alright, let's start with the bottom one.
Okay, one, two, let's get the level. Perfectly aligned. Beautiful. All right, let me put the screws in here. That shouldn't take too long. So, this is done and it's pretty solid. I gotta see what Scott did the last time because there's something going on with this shelf. Uh, I have to, I know put that little piece, I don't know what he did, and uh, I can see there's a screw over there that needs to be put in again, so I'm going to re-tighten everything here, um, because that's the one that has the heaviest stuff. Alright, so you get the idea, right? I got one, two shelves so far. Um, I still get plenty of light, granted, because there's nothing on the shelf. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be uh, um, totally blocked out once I have all of my corning wear on it. But just think about it. When I come in from the back door, the first thing I'm going to see is my corning wear. <laughs> and then I won't see Ralph go to the bathroom anymore. <laughs> so this win-win. Um, I'm super excited about this. I can't wait to clean out all the stuff so the bottom part here is going to be the big pieces the heavy ones the ones that i use the most though it seems that this shelf is a little bit more solid than this one so i may actually move them here i do a mix i could do that i could do a mix of the ones i use the most and some other pieces it doesn't have to be you know um all matchy matchy um but yeah i'm excited so i guess so guess what i'm going to see you again when I come back, I'll have three shelves. Uh, and then um, I'll have them stained too. The staining is nothing. Okay. I had to buy a new can because I used it all on the swing um, over the summer. The color is gun stock, gun stock. I always call it gun smoke, but it's gun stock 231. And you just put on gloves, you just apply it with an old rag. Uh, one coat it absorbs right away put a second coat within 15 20 minutes it doesn't even you know um, show anymore so I'll do all three shelves so when you see me again I'll be ready to wash all my corning wear and put it on the shelves I'm gonna go to bed tonight with my corning wear collection in front of the window um, and yeah what time is it four o'clock you would think right why is it taking so long I don't know um, I don't know, but I gotta fix this shelf here. I don't know why Scott's shelf is not stable. There's a problem over there. I think I need to put in a bigger screw because um, I don't want that to collapse. Can you imagine if any of those collapse and my corning wear falls? That would be a tragedy. Yay! It's done! So now I'm filling up the sink with hot soapy water, but here we go. I got three shelves. They are stained. They are leveled, they look great. I can't wait to play with my corning wear. I'm going to put it uh, in the sink, well at least the pieces I don't use, which are the um, you know accessories and stuff, wash them all and then figure out where they're going to go on the shelves. and 80s uh, I'm going to pull that down so we can see a little bit better a company named Gemco G-M-C-O uh, partnered with Corning uh, and they were licensed to do other things with the glass and the patterns 
So they came up with a whole bunch of stuff, in particular in this pattern, and then of course in the blue corn flower, uh, which is still issued by the way, because that's the number one pattern they did. Um, and I think they did a 60 anniversary or something like that, not too long ago. So, as I mentioned earlier, they did everything but the kitchen sink in that particular pattern. Um, but definitely in the Spice of Life, which is the one I collect. So, this one, I am missing, um, I found it at a Goodwill. I'm missing the top parts with the spoons. I'm still looking for them. Uh, but that's all right. This is kind of like a Lazy Susan type tray. And it says Le Serveur on it, which means, um, you know, the waiter or a serving uh, dish. So this was basically a condiment uh, thing. So that's going to go over here. I'm sure you can't see it from here, but that's all right. Uh, next to it. Because I want you to know that this entire time I'm putting up shelves, I'm thinking about where I'm going to put stuff, right? Um, I told you I was going to put the accessories and the stuff I don't use only because I don't want to damage it. Um, I'm going to put the mustard, and it says in French, uh, la moutarde. <laughs> and here it says sauce tomate, sauce de tomate, uh, which is tomato sauce, but really it's ketchup. And we say ketchup in France, we don't say sauce to tomate, but that's all right. So we're going to have the uh, um, tomato sauce, the ketchup and the mustard. So with ketchup and mustard, of course, we got all the condiment stuff, right? We're going to put in the salt and pepper. I'm going to put the little tops here. And these say la salière for the salt. My mom's gonna have a kick out of those when she sees them. Um, and then this one says le poivrier uh, for pepper. So, like this. I'm having fun. You know, people collect all sorts of things. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. I know that everybody wants to be a minimalist and have the one twig on the. Uh, uh, in a uh, gray pottery vase on the kitchen table or you know dining room or whatever that's not me i like stuff stuff makes me happy so i have stuff le sirop that's um maple syrup it's so cool <laughs> for all of you who've sent me these items thank you so much um there's too many to names to remember uh, this one says le sucrier, that's for sugar. See, they all come together, and this is so cool. It's got the little toggle thing to put the sugar. So we got the syrup, and we got sugar. And one of my favorites is this one. This one is really cool, and actually it should go with... Uh, the sugar. That's le pot de crème. And that's um, milk. It's a creamer. Let me try to put it in in a better way. Alright, so we're going to put the pot de crème here with the sugar. Right here, because they're part of the same kind of collection. Okay. Um, what else? Hmm, I need something here. All right, we have these. These I had never seen before. It's uh, ceramic. This is not corning. This is ceramic. They are superb. I love them. The canisters, basically. Uh, let's move this a little bit here because that's part of one collection. Do this here, 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 and then we get the little one that go with it. And I believe these were sent to me by a gentleman. Because um, some of them watch my channel. 
Okay, here we go. Probably for giggles, but... Alright. Alright, these don't say anything in French. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> you probably think this girl is crazy. Yeah, maybe. I don't care. Okay. That's the pièce de résistance. This one I found at a Goodwill. Uh, South Jersey. That's the percolator. Now, just a word of advice if you're going to collect Corningware. Uh, other than, yes, do so. <laughs> I want you to know that the percolators have been recalled. Uh, they had an issue with the glue, and you can see it, it's so well top. They had an issue with the glue, and the silver band would detach itself, and the whole thing would crash. So they discontinued them. They have them in both um, electric and um, regular stovetop uh, percolators. Alright, and this is just a regular oval dish that was a, uh, I don't know, like a pot pie thing. Alright, and now we're starting with the round stuff. So, the round stuff I don't really use. Fourth shelf. <laughs> I need a fourth shelf. <laughs> I can't believe it. This is awesome. I need a fourth shelf. Um, listen, I only collect two things. I collect these and I collect um, Hager Madonnas. Uh, the rest is stuff that I got from the family and you know, like the heirloom and you know, the china and the crystal stuff like this. But these, this, this makes me really happy. So let me show you what I did. I have a temporary fourth shelf. Obviously, I got to install another one uh, at a later time. It's probably gonna stay like that for two years before I put another one. Um, but I'm really happy, and guess what? It looks great from the outside. <laughs> what to me. All right, so don't mind the mess because I'm still cleaning and stuff, right? So, but basically when you come in, this is what it looks like. Um, it looks, it makes the kitchen look bigger. How could it possibly make the kitchen bigger? I don't know. But let me show you. So, um, bottom part here are the ones I actually use a lot. Uh, the round one is a wrench topper. That's the one that has the metal part underneath it. And Scott uses it every Sunday to make his beans. Uh, he used that one too. I use it. We make uh, rice in this one. This one I used to put in the microwave. I do a salmon in it. Of course, this is for brownies, uh, macaroni and cheese or whatever. And then these are the square one. They will have lids, but this one here and this one have dome lids. So this is a roaster. I can actually, five quart roaster, I can actually put a full chicken in it. Um, so that's shelf number one. These will get moved almost every day. Shelf number two, I have the breakfast um, set, which is the creamer, syrup, and sugar. I have the round saucepans. I have the petite square ones. I have these here. This is the condiment section. I have on the third shelf, I have two of these. I have one large that's left that's on the other side and then the three that I've shown you uh, in the uh, cupboard and then there's a, a tiny one and another one so the tiny one uh, the glass broke in shipping but I kept the top just in case um, and all the glass by the way whether it's a glass lid or glass for canisters they are all made by Pyrex I have the warmo tray uh, electric warming plate that's in the back the two ceramic ones here, percolator there, and then I added this shelf that I found in the garage, so I didn't stain it, nothing, um, just to put this one on, and because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to stop here, all right? 
So there's still some room here and there for um, little accessories. What I'm really looking for is the rest of the wrench toppers and the rest of the round casseroles. I don't have any of the round casseroles. I have the saucepans, but not the casseroles. And then the brownie uh, pan, um, the square one. And there was a uh, bacon roaster. I mean, there's so many of them. This is the lasagna one. It's actually pretty hard to find. Um, I got really lucky. I found it for eight bucks at a Goodwill. And when I shared that on and this one too for eight bucks. When I shared those two on my Corningware uh, Facebook page, everybody was like, oh my God, you're so lucky. So yeah, I guess I do feel lucky. Um, so let me close the curtain because I can still open and close it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, not that you need to see that, but anyway. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And now we're talking, I have a collection. It makes sense. It makes sense to have them on display and it makes sense to have them on display in a way that is pleasant and looks like there's a collection going on. So I'm very happy. I did quite a lot today. Didn't seem like it, but I did quite a lot. So I'm gonna leave you at that. And um, I know it's ridiculous for a lot of you. I get it, um, but it makes me happy, you know? And. Yay, Sophia, she only gets happy when she does stuff. Stuff makes her happy. Okay, and? Hmm? I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's an entire community of Corningware and Pyrex um, collectors out there. And this makes me happy. I'm so happy. I almost want to do the dishes by hand now, so I can just like do the dishes looking at my corningware. <laughs> I love cleaning it, I love looking at it. This pattern is really awesome. Um, I know some people prefer other pattern, you know, I guess it speaks to me for whatever reason, probably because it's written in French. It just makes me very happy. And you know what, I like the fact that I put the fourth shelf over there because it blocks the light. That light was bugging me a lot. Um, so when I turn off the light, doesn't make much of a difference. I can't wait to see it in the sunshine. With the sun going through, oh, it's gonna look so good. Um, but anyway, so job well done. I'm very happy, that's all that matters. Um, ladies, you can install shelves. If you have a collection of anything, what a great way. If you really don't have a nice view on the other side of your kitchen window, if you're lucky enough to have a kitchen window, above your sink um, and you don't have a very nice view, install some shelves and put your collections on. Obviously that's something that was done a lot back in the days because if you remember the 1950s kitchen had the rounded um, shelves on the corner here and ladies used to put little knickknacks. You know what they used to put on there? The Joseph um, little figurines. So they would put, um, even Madonna planters, they would put planters and figurines and stuff. So it's not an uncommon thing to do to put decorative item or collections um, above your sink. And they're all kitchen related, so why not? I would probably prefer to have this and the Madonnas here. But anyway, one day if I ever decide that I'm uh, tired of the corning wear, I can put my Madonnas here. Um, or for whatever, you know, or I can put anything else, it doesn't matter. But I told Scott, I want to be buried with my crowning wear or I want to be cremated and my urn will be a corning wear. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm joking, but it's not far-fetched. Okay, so this is it. I'm done. I'm going to finish tidy up the kitchen. It's 6.15. I'm going to spend some time on the treadmill and do two miles. I finished, uh, for those of you who follow, I finished the English Channel Challenge, the 21 miles, and I registered for the Inca Trail, and I'm starting it today. If you want to do it, I'm going to create a Migrate Challenge team. You have to sign up. Um, just, you know, sign up, look for the team, you'll see Migrate Challenge team. I'm going to do that tonight. Um, it's not free, I'm just saying, you know, you have to pay to be part of the challenge, but every time you reach 20%, that you plant a tree 
well, they plant a tree for you, so it's doing something good. So, you know, four trees per race is being planted thanks to you. And then you get a medal. And uh, I can't wait to get my English Channel medal. You think it's stupid, but let me tell you this, okay? This girl here never ran a mile in her life, all right? I couldn't even do a half a lap in high school. I ran two laps the other day at 5.5 miles per hour. <laughs> They are my stats. It's pathetic, but I did it. I'm 50 years old. I can't believe I have the energy to do that. I'm feeling good about it. I'm feeling good about myself. I'm energized. I'm doing activity more so than I've ever done before. I'm going to continue to lose weight and, you know, get the best health I can get. And if that means that, yeah, I got to pay 40 bucks to join a virtual walking challenge, why not? It keeps me motivated. If I wasn't doing it, if I didn't have the challenge as an incentive, you know, to do it, um, I would probably give up after two or three days. But I want to get the medal, <laughs> so I'm, gonna, I'm waiting for my. So I'm waiting for my English Channel medal, and uh, don't worry, I'll share pictures. And now I'm working towards my Inca Trail medal. So maybe one day I'll have a wall of medals. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. But bottom line is I'm having fun doing it and it's pushing me to exercise something I've never done before. So to each your own. If it works for me, I'm going to do that. I'll talk to you later, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, thumbs up if you like my corning wear collection and the way I displayed it. And, um, you know, having it here instead of on the counter and in the cabinet. Now the cabinet, I kept the doors. <laughs> so I'm going to put the doors back on. And uh, that would be it. All right. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching, you guys. Bye. Hey, it's me. And guess what? Click that thumbs up if you really like this video. Thumbs down twice if you didn't. You can also share my video if you really, really liked it or save it to watch later. Also, you can subscribe to my channel, but don't forget to click that bell button so you are always notified when I post a new video. Thank you for watching.